What does it mean to be a man? What does it mean to be man of God? Now, if you're a woman, you might think this sermon is not for you. But when God created man and woman, Adam and Eve, he created to he created them to be one body through marriage. But so this is for everyone. Now, the sin entered into the world and it changed everything. It marred it, uh, twisted the role of a man and the role of a woman. So today's passage, First Corinthians chapter 16, I want us to look at what it really means to be the man of God as God designed them to be. So let's look at today's passage together in 1 Corinthians 16, verses 13 through 14. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Let all that you do be done in love. So in this passage, I can draw two things, two elements that a man of God must have. The first one is power. The second one is love. Power and love. These are the elements that you need to have as the man of God. So let's go back to today's passage. The first one, the power. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Now, what does it mean to be strong? If you have a lot of money, you are strong. Well, when I was growing up, you know, my friends used to compare their father's cars. My father has the best car in the world. And some of them say, my father's car is better than your, your father's car. So they were kind of comparing uh, by their, their fa- parents' cars. So if they have really the best brand car, then they might think that their father is the most powerful. But if your father doesn't have that kind of luxurious car, then your father may not be the powerful. So my friends who have poorer cars, they kind of quiet, uh, quietly left the room to avoid the conversation to talk about how powerful their father uh, fathers are. Now, is that really the standard to be powerful according to the Word of God? Not at all. Now, let's go back to today's passage. Let's see what kind of power the Bible is talking about. Now, look at this. Be on the alert. What kind of alert is this? Now, at the time, there were lots of false prophets. In chapter 15, we talked about, we studied about the resurrection. You know, what is the gospel? Core gospel is Jesus died, was buried, and rose again, according to verses 3 and 4 of chapter 15. But there were false prophets preaching the half gospel. They were saying that Jesus died, yes, but Jesus did not really rise. Well, the apostle Paul said, you are wrong. And the apostle Paul, the true gospel is that Jesus Jesus died and rose again. If Jesus did not die, I mean, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then our faith is futile. It's in vain. So you must hold on to this truth. So the, this that this is what Apostle Paul meant. Be on the alert, meaning the strength, the power is the power to be steadfast in your faith in the Lord. Do not be dismayed. Do not be shaken in your faith. That's why it continues. he continues to say, stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Amen. So this is really the firm faith to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not compromise your faith no matter what happens. Be faithful unto the Lord. Hold on to the gospel of Christ Jesus that he died and rose again. So that is the power the Apostle Paul is talking about. The biblical manhood is not a muscle power. It's not a money power. It's not a human glory power. But it is the faith power, the power to be uh, to be to remain faithfully in their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But also, Apostle Paul is saying, if you are a man, man of God, you need to have love as well. Go back to today's passage. Look at verse fourteen. It says, "Let ev- that all that you do be done in love." You see, the love is emphasized here as well. Now, if you remember, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there are lots of lists of the gifts. But in chapter 13, above all things, love is the most important gifts of all. Uh, the speaking tongue and the prophecies will cease, but love will never cease. Love will remain forever. So the love is 
very, very significant. The Church of Corinth was suffering because of division, but why, why did the division happen? Because of the greediness and jealousy, and then there was a comparison that people were comparing it to each other, and they were despising or they were discouraged uh, by, the, uh, by this comparison. So what does that really mean? They were showing the lack of love. If they truly loved one another, then this division problem would not happen. So the love is really the key. What is the greatest comparison? Commandment. It is to love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. So that's the greatest command that we need to love one another. But how can you love one another? It is not from your love. This is not a romantic love. That This is the agape, sacrificial, godly love that we don't have. We The love that we have is really selfish love as we studied from chapter 14. But we must be full of God because God is love, according to John. And uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 10, God first loved us so that we love Him. So love is initiated by Him, meaning that we need to lay down ourselves, lay down ourselves, and we need to be filled with God, be filled with the Holy Spirit so that our love is not love Uh, that comes from us, but that love must be coming from the Lord. That is the love. That is the man of God's love. Now, you must have this power and love together, the power to be steadfast in the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, and also the love that comes from the Lord so you can love others as Christ uh, Jesus did. That uh, God demonstrated His own love toward us. That while we're still sinners, but Christ died for us. That is the Romans 5, 8. God showed His love for us. So that is the kind of a love that Apostle Paul is talking about. Now, so the, the power and love must be combined to be the man of God. But this power and love combination is the, the constant theme in the Bible. Exodus 3, verses 11 through 14. That is the first account, encounter between God and Moses. But God revealed Himself and said, I am who I am. That means He is the most high God, supreme God, sovereign God. There is no higher thing um, than God Himself. So that shows really the power of God. But also, in verse 14, uh, God said to Moses, I'll be with you. That means the loving presence with Moses. Now, this pattern was repeated in Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, the great uh, great, uh, commission. What does it say? That Jesus has all the authority of heaven and earth. It shows that Jesus is power, but also Jesus promised his loving presence. He said, I'll be with you all the days of your life until the end of time. What does that mean? It means the loving presence with us. So power and love go together. But the ultimate example, ultimate demonstration of power and love is shown in the, uh, the cross and the empty tomb. What is the cross? The cross is the humble punishment that Jesus uh, took for us, that Jesus became the curse uh, to free us from the curse, according to Galatians chapter 3, verse, 4, verse 13, that Jesus humbly sacrificed, humbled himself and be being obedient to the, uh, to the point of death, according to Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Now, why did he do that? One word, love. Jesus loves us. Jesus loves you. God loves you. That is why He sent His own Son. That is why He sacrificed. He gave His body for us to take your sin upon Him. And He died in your place on behalf of you. So that is the true love. That is the pure love. That is the godly love. That is the agape sacrificial love. There is no other love that you can find other than the cross of Christ Jesus. That Jesus died and He shed His blood. He tore His body because He loved loves us. That is the love that we're talking about. But also, we can see the power of God. Where do we see that? We see it in the resurrection of Christ Jesus. In three days, God raised Jesus from the dead. That is the power of God manifested truly. It is not a concept, but it is the fact. This shows, this shows that Jesus is really the Son of God. He is God. He is mighty God. That He showed His power through the resurrection. Now, Jesus died and rose again. He showed His love and He showed His perfect power. 
Now we learned from last week in uh, chapter 15 that there is the the uh, the very strong power, definite power, which is it? Which is the uh, sin and death. Everyone is under that pressure, and there's no mighty billionaire or no mighty military leader who can fight against and win over death and sin. They all die. We all die. That is the fact. However, there's the ultimate power. What is what is uh, what is that? That is the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Jesus conquered the sin and death. That is the power the Bible is talking about. So we see this perfect combination of power and love. Now, there and the other religions, there may be some uh, powerful God, but without love, but there's uh, some gods, uh, like a human lo uh, loving gods, but there is no power. But our God, the God of the Bible, is the only God who has both perfect power and perfect love. And that is the true God that we love and we serve. Um, so that is the truth that we need to hold on to. Now, we are God's children. You know, if you believe in Christ Jesus, that God will make you, God will give you a right to become the children of God. According to John 1, 12, as child of God, we must represent, represent, reflect who He is, that we need to have this power and love together. That is what talking about here. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will receive this power power. And according to Acts chapter 1, 8, what kind of power is it? It's Again, this is not a money power. This is not a best branded branded car. But this is the power to be the witnesses of Jesus. That you walk with Jesus and you talk about Jesus everywhere you go. So that is the power that we're talking about. That you need to hold on to your faith in Christ Jesus and you need to spread this faith all around the world. That is the power. And also you must be loving as well because God has loved you first. So so you are going to love him and you are going to love one another as yourself. When you love one another, that the world will know that you are God's disciple. According to John 13, 34, 35, love is, love matters. Love is so important, but power uh, is as well. So how must live it out in our life? First of all, be powerful, be strong, be a strong father. How? Not to show off your muscle to them, but to show your children that how much you love the Lord. Every day, start your day with the Word of God and pray. Show your children that you're dedicated to the Lord. Not just on Sunday, but every day, Monday through Saturday. Okay, And no matter what uh, circumstances you might face, always be faithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. Even if your boss says, hey, come and let's drink together, you know, you need to love the Lord more than uh, loving your boss, loving your, uh, the, your work. You need to show your faithful love unto the Lord. That is the power. Do not compromise your faith. Always stick to the gospel of Christ Jesus at home, at workplaces, everywhere you go, so that your children will learn from that power. At the same time, you need to be loving father. Spend more time with your children. You know, I know you're busy with your work, but the work, do not put work before your family. Love God first, and then love your family, and then work comes later. But some people are just confused by that. You know, they, they, they're actually some people are opposite to that. You know, outside, they are uh, compromising so well. They are loving so that uh, in a human way, so that they kind of um, just drink and uh, smoke and they just uh, kind of enjoy their entertainment just like the world. But when they come home, they abuse their family with, you know, uh, being harsh on them, with, this, with the, uh, the physical abuse even. That is totally opposite to what the Bible is saying. The Bible says you need to be strong in your faith, but you need to be loving for your family and others. Loving and power must be represented and presented in your life continually. And that is what it means to be the man of God. You must have the power and you must have this love 
both power and love and that you, and show this power and love at your home at your workplaces wherever you go so let's pray that we will restore this biblical manhood but not just for men but everyone right we need to be hold on to the faith the uh, faith in Christ Jesus we need to be we should not we must not compromise our faith at the same time we must be loving uh, as well we need to love one another as people of God so let's stick to this gospel and let's love one another for God's glory. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you for your glory, for your mercy. Father, we pray for fathers and the sons and the husbands and everyone who are who are who is listening to this message that they would be truly uh, filled with your Holy Spirit, so that they could have this good balance of power and love wherever they go. We thank you. We praise you in Jesus' holy name. We pray. Amen. <music>